Okay, welcome back guys to another video from CXC my tutor. Um, so we will continue with the series of videos on the January 2019 past paper. And now we're looking at um, question number seven. Question number seven from the January 2019 past paper. So a sequence of figures is made um, from joining polygons with size of unit length. And so the first three figures in the sequence are drawn below, are shown below. All right, so, so all of these are the same lengths here. All right, all of these sides are the same lengths, and that's the first figure, that's the second figure, and that's the third figure. And they simply want you to draw the, the fourth figure, uh, which we should look something like this. All right. So all of these sides are unit length, meaning that they are the same measurement. Right. Of course, my drawing is not um, too accurate here, but you get the point, right? I just draw the fourth one now. All right, so I'm sure you can do a better job um, in the exam when you join this, all right? That's all you have to do um, to get, uh, is it two marks for this? All right, and this is your fourth figure. So make sure you label it properly, all right? This figure four. And you see the label this figure one, figure two, figure three, and this is figure four, all right? And that's your fourth figure in the sequence, all right? And for doing that, you get two marks. All right, so let's move on to part B. Right. And usually they will give you a table for you to study. Yeah. And that's exactly what you have here. Part B says study the pattern of numbers in each row of the table below. Right? Each row relates to one of the, the figures in the sequence of figures on page 23. So each row represents um, one of the figures. So this is the first figure, second figure, third figure, and so forth. All right? And show, uh, as I said, some rows have not been included in the table. Okay, so there are some missing rows here, right? like here, for example. Okay, and it says now um, complete the rows uh, number one, two, and three. All right, so it says study the pattern, study the pattern of numbers um, um, in the table. All right, so you want to spend a minute or so on the exam to actually do that because the more you know, the more information you have about the, the, the table itself, the better it is for you to actually answer the question towards the end. All right, and to answer those rows that they want you to answer. So looking at this, you can see, okay, then this is figure one, all right? And this represents, as I said, this as a question so that each row represents the, um, each figure in the sequence. So each row, so this is row one, it's row two, it's row three, and so forth. Each row represents um, a figure in the sequence, all right? So, so we have figure there where the number of outer lines of unit length, right? And the perimeter, all right? So the outer lines of unit length actually referring to those lines that are outside here, all right? So for example, if you take figure one, you have one, two, three, for five outer lines. All right, figure two, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outer lines, and so forth. All right, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven outer lines, and so forth. All right, so that's what I mean by outer lines. 
right. So, now note that, um, as I said before, it's good for you to spend a minute or so to actually study this table here and get as much information out of it as possible. So note that uh, if you look at the first set of numbers here, that actually corresponds with the, the figure. So if you're talking about figure one, this number is going to be a one, two as well. If it's figure two, this is also number two. And if it's figure three, you're talking about this is, number, this is also three. So the, 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 the number for the figure is exactly the same number here. All right? And note that um, these numbers here are actually the same numbers. So regardless of what the figure you're talking about, you will always have a two here. Two, 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 two. So those numbers are constant. These numbers does not change. All right? Don't change. And so now, looking at this column of numbers here, you can see that um, this is actually twice the number of figures. So that if you have one figure here, then it's going to be two times one will be two. If it's figure number two, two times two gives you four. And if it's figure number three, three times three, uh, three times two gives you six. All right. So these numbers here, two, four, and six, which is actually increasing by two, all right, is always twice the number for the figure. All right. So that's that's something you can um, take note of. And the parameter here, the parameter. Um, this is actually the sum of the outer sides. All right, so one plus two plus two gives you five, right? So one plus two is three, plus two gives you five. And then two plus two is four, plus four gives you eight. And three plus two is five, plus six gives you 11. All right, so that's how you get these numbers here. And these numbers here, if you look at it, is actually increased by three. So they what they call an arithmetic sequence. So three plus five gives us eight, eight plus three gives us 11, and 11 plus three gives us 14 and so forth, all right? So, um, knowing that information is very easy for, not, for you to now answer these questions. Right? So for example, we know that since a figure is six, all right, then these first set of numbers here, Containing this pattern is also going to be a six here, all right? Plus two, all right? So that's always going to have a constant two there. That does not change, all right? And as I said before, this number here is always twice the figure, all right? So if the figure is six, then we expect this number here to be two times six, which is 12, all right? And the parameter is a simple add up the numbers here. So six plus two is eight, and eight um, plus 12 gives us 20. All right, so this is a 20 there. All right. So that's your answer for the first row, all right, for two marks. All right. And of course, it, it was much easier for you to answer these questions simply because you have more information about this all right so it's spend that extra minute to study the table all right look at the patterns and so on and so forth okay all right so that's it for part one there let's move on to part two this time now they give you the the total for the perimeter and now they ask you for the number of um outer sides and the figure all right so, we know that, um, for example, that let's say that if this figure here was, we don't know what it is, but let's say what it was n, let's use some variable n. Then we know that, um, continuing with this pattern here, okay, this will also be n2 as well, because this number here corresponds to whatever the figure is, plus, okay, we're going to always have a two there. That's constant. That, that, that does not change. All right. Plus, um, if a figure is n, then 
this number here, all right, continue with this pattern here, is always two times n, or two times the figure. So the figure is n, we expect this to be 2n, all right? And we also know that if you add up these here, all right, then that will give you 65, all right? So this is the perimeter, all right? So n plus 2 plus 2n should give you 65. Right. So I'm going to solve this equation now for n, which will give you my figure. Right. So n plus 2n is 3n, plus 2 equals 65. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So 3n is equal to 65 minus 2. Right. 3n is equal to 63. And divide both sides by 3 to solve for n. So n is now equal to 21. 63 divided by 3 is 21. So we know what our figure is because n represents the number of figure. All right, so we can write it in. Right. So the figure is 21, right? And we know that this first set of number here, continue with this pattern here, right? It's also going to be a 21 plus. Um, the two will remain constant, so the plus two plus. Um, we know that this set of number here, continue with this pattern, is always two times um, the figure. So if the figure is 21, 21 multiplied by two is 42. Right? So that's our answer here. So 21 for the figure, and in the first set of number you have 21 plus 2 plus 42 will give us 65. And note that if you add up these numbers here, we should get 65. Right? 21 plus 2 is 23, plus 42 is 65. That's your answer for two marks. Right? Okay, let's move on to part 3. And technically, we have actually answered past three already by just um, letting the figure be n up here. So here the figure is n, all right? So we know that here is going to be n, all right? Based on our, our, our pattern there, plus 2 remains the same, plus 2 times n, all right? And if you add these up, all right, n plus... 2 plus 2n, n plus n, collect your like terms, it will give you 3n plus the 2. Right? So 3n plus 2 actually represent the, the parameter. All right? So that's your answer when your figure is n. Right? So for the nth figure, you have this information there, n plus 2 plus 2n, and the sum of this will give you the um, the parameter, which is 3n plus 2. All right. Okay, part C. So, as you can see that all the questions become very easy when you spend an extra minute to actually study the table, study the pattern in the table. And you always try to compare the numbers with the figure and so forth to see if there is any um, if they are similar, all right, and so forth. All right, um, show that no figure can have a perimeter of um, 100 units, all right? So we know that, for example, if you have the nth figure that can represent any number, any whole number, n is any whole number because we're talking about an actual figure, shape, all right? So we can represent the figure as a decimal number, right? If we represent as an old number, the first figure, the second figure, the third figure, the fourth figure, the fifth figure, the sixth figure, the seventh figure, figure, the eighth figure, and so forth. There's no such thing as 0.5 figure or 0.3 figure. It has to be an old number, all right? So n is an old number. That's very important to note, all right? So if the figure is n, then we expect the perimeter has to be 3n plus 2. All right, and so 
we know that if we let the, the parameter be 100, for example, so 3n plus 2 equal to 100, and if I solve for n here, this n has to give me an old number. It has to give me an old number. If I get any other number, like a decimal number or some fractions or something like that, then the parameter cannot, cannot be 100 unit. Yeah. So let's solve for n and see what we get. So 3n is equal to 100 minus 2. 3n is equal to 100 minus 2 is 98. And if I divide both sides by 3 to solve for n, 3 cancel 3, n is equal to 98 divided by 3. Let's put that on my calculator and see if we get an old number. Of course, you're not going to get it, but let's just check it. Yes, so you get 32.666, uh, for example. You cannot get a decimal number for, the, for n, because n represents number for the figure, and that number has to be a whole number, all right? So no, the answer is no. Um, well, show that figure, no figure can have a perimeter of n, of, of 100 units. So yes, um, that's true. No figure can have a, a perimeter of 100 units because your n is a decimal number. Your n has to be a whole number, okay? So that's how you show that, um, that no perimeter can be 100 units, all right? Because 98 divided by three is not a whole number, okay? And the figure for the num the, the number for the figure has to be a whole number, as I said before. Okay, so that's how you show that. All right, so that's 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 it for question number seven. So we'll continue um, on question number eight in the following video. So look out for that. Remember, please share, subscribe, and like the video. All right, preferably share it to your friends and subscribe. All right, okay then, thanks.